What is percentage Mach? And how do we use it to better understand our center of gravity? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the fifth class in the Mass and Balance series. In the last class, we talked about the centre of gravity and the centre of pressure and how they interact with each other to cause rotation. This class will be a jump a bit deeper into those concepts and how we describe the positions based on percentage mean aerodynamic chord. The position of the centre of gravity is most commonly described in relation to the centre of pressure. This is because the wing design is fixed and therefore the center of pressure is also relatively fixed. It does move depending on the angle of attack and levels of airflow over the wing, but that's covered in principles of flight. For the purposes of mass and balance, the center of pressure can be considered stationary. The center of gravity, however, moves based on the loading, as we saw previously, it moves either forward or backwards. So we describe the position of the center of gravity and the center of pressure in relation to a fixed reference. This reference that we use is something called the mean aerodynamic chord or MAC. The chord of a wing is a line from the leading edge through the center of the wing to the most trailing edge cutting the wing directly in half. This dotted line here is the chord line of this wing. Now, in modern aircraft, and all aircraft in fact, wings are not uniform the whole way along. They taper off towards the ends, just by their design. This means that the cord length across the whole wing varies as we go down. It gets reduced as we go towards the wing tip, and it's larger at the wing root. So using this concept of the mean aerodynamic cord, we essentially take an average of all these different lengths and equate this wing into something that looks a lot more square shaped. This is our mean wing and from that we take our mean aerodynamic cord. So our centre of gravity and our centre of pressure are usually described as a percentage figure along this fictional wing or this mean aerodynamic cord. To get that percentage, we use the standard sort of practice of we take the smaller number, divide it by the bigger number and multiply it by 100. So, you know, standard percentage sort of stuff like, um, what is 20, per, 20 out of 100? You would do 20 divided by 100 and then times by 100, obviously it's 20% in this case, but that simple process. So we'll do a quick example just to show what we're talking about. This is our example. The center of gravity reference to a datum is plus 25 centimeters. The leading edge Mach is located at minus 40 and the trailing edge Mach is at 1.2 meters. What is the percentage Mach of the center of gravity? So we draw the effing picture. So we've got our datum point. We're just gonna pop that in as a line here. Center of gravity is plus 25, plus to the right. So our center of gravity is over here, and that's 25 centimeters. Our leading edge Mac is located at minus 40, so that's over here, and that's the start of our wing over here. That's at 40 centimeters. And our trailing edge Mac is located at 1.2, so that's gonna be over here and this distance in here is 1.2 meters 1.2 meters so we have this fictional wing looks something along the lines of that with our center of gravity along it like that so this is very simple we just take the smaller number which is how far back along we are divide it by the bigger number and we come up with our answer so in this case, our bigger number is 65 because we're 65 back from the start. We're going to then divide by the total, which is 1.6 or 160 centimeters. And then we're going to multiply that by 100 and come up with our answer, which is 
40.63%, 41%-ish. So our C of G is equal to 48% math. When flying and using load sheets in mass and balance practice exams, for example, you will see that there is a range for the center of gravity described in terms of this percentage Mach. If you're outside of this range, then we have to adjust the center of gravity position back inside this range before we take off, or we could end up with an uncontrollable aircraft leading to stall disaster national airlines flight. The easiest method to move this percentage Mach is to move the traffic load, the cargo or the people. If we see that the percentage Mach is too little, aka too far forward, then we move some of the traffic load further back in the aircraft and this pulls the center of gravity further back. This is the reason that even if you're on an empty flight, you will need to sit near the middle of the plane in order to keep the percentage Mach from going too far forward or too far back. Another way to balance out if you're not limited on weight is you could add more fuel to use as a ballast and this would not be included in your fuel total because you're not actually going to use that fuel. At that point it would be considered unusable fuel and part of your basic empty mass. To summarize, the Mac is an average shape of the wing. It's this line that goes through. It's a fictional concept, but it's the average cord length of the whole wing if it was equated to a rectangular wing. C of G and center of pressure are described as a percentage of Mac. You find out that percentage using the standard sort of method for finding out percentages. You take the smaller number, divide it by the bigger number, multiply it by about 100. If we are outside of our percentage Mac range, we need to move traffic loads or add some fuel for ballast, which then is considered unusable because if we use it, we will then be out of balance on our center of gravity and center of pressure might move outside the range for the percentage Mac causing uncontrollable handling issues.